So this weekend we are going to tackle replacing the radiator 2012 Cascadia DD13. And first thing I'm going to do is take this bumper off, give us a little more room to work, take off these inner fenders. See the four bolts there we got to do, we're going to take them off. Uh, I will also take the grill out. I think it'll make a little bit more room. Uh, the guy's radiator in and out. And then uh, you may have to take these supports off. It comes back down here to the motor. Take that off. And we're, first thing I'm going to do is take that reservoir off. The charge air cooler has to come off. Uh, it comes out with the radiator and then comes off. and gets mounted up to the new radiator. So I will... Uh, Kind of step by step it but that's what we're going to start with and as i go through it i'll show y'all what i do and uh, how we're going to tackle it okay here we are back putting the taking a radiator out of this you see i took the bumper off uh, i took the grill out uh, you need to have a barrel to support the hood uh, i've got that cardboard in there just to keep the hood up where it uh, gets slack off of the supports and then once I get the supports out, I'll drop the hood down on top of the barrel. And here's your supports you gotta take out right here. And of course you gotta take loose your hydraulics. One thing on this radiator, looking at it, most of the online videos I see, radiator has three bolts right here that bolts it up into the frame and on here. You'll see on this one, it does not have it. Uh, most of your Cascadias will have a support right here that goes on the frame. It's got some bolts in it. Uh, instead, on this one, it has the same supports that the Columbia's and Accenture class have. It's got two bolts here on the bottom that support the radiator. And uh, that's it on the bottom. And then on the top, you've got a support here. It goes down onto the motor. And then on the other side, you've got one that comes off the center on the top here. And then it's got another one just like this. It goes down on the engine frame. And next we're going to drain the water out of it. And we're going to take off this reservoir. Excuse the bumper being over here. To get the water out of it, it's got a plug right there on that radiator that you're going to pull and all the water will come out of the radiator there and back over here on this side you can see the support over here it goes down on the motor and this is that center one right here it goes across over to here okay so the radiator is pulled out as you can see the two two bolts go down there this is one of their radiator lines. Goes on the far end. You do have to take your uh, fan off. 9 16 bolt. We had one more transmission line that uh, fought me. It's laying down there on the ground. I think it's still good, but I'll probably go ahead and go get a new one. Just to make sure. But uh, there it is. It's all out of there. Let me come over here. I've got it up here. Uh, getting ready to take the charge air cooler off of it. It comes out as all one piece. Uh, I took the air conditioner condenser off. It's laying up there. Uh, we don't have to crack any of the lines open, get rid of the AC Freon. So it is up there, as you can see. We had quite a bit of mess with antifreeze going everywhere. So uh, we're going to let it down now and uh, pull that charge air cooler off of it. What you have to do is take this frame off. You've got a bolt right here that you gotta take off. I believe it's this one right here. And then I believe one right here. And uh, there's one at the top, another one at the top. And here's your lines. You have to take these out and put them in the new transmission. This one's already out. It came out with the deal. So we got to get that out of there. Put it in the new radiator. 
set it down on the ground, pull the frame off of it. There's the supports that came off of it. And there you go. So we ran into a roadblock on a radiator replacement. The radiator they sent me was not the correct one. I went and picked it. It was an aftermarket radiator. Uh, none of the part numbers Freightliner gave me matched what was in the truck. So this is hard to do with it in the truck, but we'll look at it here. To measure your radiator, to make sure you're getting the right one, you want to measure the fin area. Top to bottom, and then from side to side over there. Uh, that way you know you're picking up the right radiator if you go to pick it up. The one they sent me was actually six inches too tall. When I put the frame up against the side of it, uh, the frame only went to right here on the new radiator instead of coming up here to the holes. So something to look at. It's it's hard to do in the truck when you've got the, the charger cooler on the front and then you've got the uh, shroud on the back. But that is what you can do is measure the fin area. And you also want to measure the thickness. And then, of course, just make sure that you're your upper radiator hose and your lower radiator hose are, are in, you know, in the same spots on the new radiator. Also, I did put a reservoir bottle on top of this radiator probably about six months ago, but I did it in the middle of the night. Couldn't do a video on it, but I want to show you something. When you do these reservoir bottles, these right here have a tendency to not want to come out. You got your reservoir that goes in between here, and these things twist and twist and twist, and they don't come out. And usually, you've either got to cut them off. What I did, I pried up with a screwdriver and got it out of there, okay? There are several fixes on the internet about this. One of them that I came across, and there are several on this, is get all thread and put in this hole. And then JB weld it in with the stud sticking out like I've done over here. What this actually is, is a bolt. And in the bottom of the hole, on this other one, I put a little bit of epoxy down in there for a cushion so that bolt wasn't sitting right on top of the top of that radiator, okay? Then I put the bolt in there and then I JB welded on top of the bolt. And then I also put this washer on top. And uh, I'll say it works good. This thing's not given. It's been in there for six months, gravel roads, a lot of bumpy ass potholes, and it's not given. It's not cracked, it's not give way. Uh, I probably should have done it over here too. But I do recommend that if you have to do a new reservoir bottle and you have problems with these and you can get them out, just do this right here. Uh, it works really good. I do recommend it. And so it is a good option and instead of trying to, you know, these are made into the radiator and they're just, uh, they're junk. Once you try to take them out, they're gone. So I do recommend doing this if you have to do that. It worked out good for me and uh, it's a good deal. Okay, we finally got the new radiator in here. We're going to put the frame on it. Here's the bottom frame. You'll see the cutout for your openings, transmission cooler, so on and so forth. It'll come with these rubber bushings here. I've already got them in this one. Okay, it's got a spacer in the middle, your two bushings. That helps with your vibrations. And they just go in these big holes, one on each corner. All right, here it is, back in the truck. I got one rad support put back on it, and then I put the transmission lines back down there on the bottom. I did have to get a brand new hose made for this one over here, if this thing would adjust. It may not. I had to get a new hose for that made. It actually had a hose on there that Freightliner said they had no clue what it was. Freightliner said these hoses right here were supposed to go all the way to the radiator. They weren't supposed to stop right here like this one. But since I didn't have this radiator in the truck, that's really uh, not a surprise. So here it is in the truck. When I took it out of the truck, I have a boom that I bought to go on the back of my pickup. This right here goes in the trailer hitch. And that's where I took it all out is one piece with the charge air cooler attached. And I just picked it up by myself and put it back in there with the charge air cooler off of it. Uh, I, if I didn't take the grill out of it, I would not have been able to do that. But uh, I, I did have the grill out, so I balanced it, 
crawled through the opening, got up here, sat it down into the mounts. And there we go. We'll just start uh, hooking the shroud up, getting the fan blades back on it, and just slowly start working our way back up to it. All right, here we go. We've got the radiator in. We've got the charger cooler back on. And we've got the condenser on it, ready to go. Uh, there's your frame bolts. Uh, you, you actually will get brand new shroud bolts to put the shroud back on. And you get new frame bolts and everything. So you, you'll get pretty much all the, all the hardware you need to put this thing together. Okay, so install is complete. Got it in here. Only thing I got to do is uh, put antifreeze in it. It's fired up. Take a look. Make sure we don't have any leaks. Now, if you want to do this yourself, it's probably five, six hour job. Uh, it's not bad. Here's it is all back together. I did go with an aftermarket radiator, looking at $800. Freightliner wanted uh, 2,000. They were willing to come down to 1,500. Like I said, when I took it out, I had a crane and took it all out as one piece. And then I just put it all back together in the truck. Kind of did it both ways to see what was easier. You can do it by taking it out piece by piece. I didn't see any difference, and no, no difference time-wise either. So uh, if you do it yourself, you save your labor. You know, a two thousand dollar job. I just got it done for less than a thousand. The only hiccup I had was the wrong radiator, and that was on Freightliner. That wasn't on me. So I hope you got something out of this. Uh, hit the thumbs up button. I'll keep doing some of these as I need to. Uh, if you have any questions about the install, just let me know. Thank you.